Welcome back to the second and final video for my list of the very best paddles of 2023. If you haven't seen the first video yet, go check that out because it provides some background and my choices for the first three paddle categories, best power, best control, and best all court paddles. So now let's move on and look at the last three categories, the best spin paddles, lightweight, and budget paddles. And stick around to the end of this video to see what my new personal favorite paddle is. Spin is a key metric that I've been tracking since I started playing pickleball, and it plays a big part in my game. It's certainly not the only metric to consider when buying a paddle, but if you prioritize top spin, slice, and putting shape on the ball, then these paddles are the best of the best. My number three spot for spin paddles goes to the Pro XR Signature Zane Navratil and Connor Garnett paddles. Both of these use a new raw carbon fiber peel ply texture that's unique to Pro XR. They generated some buzz and a fair bit of controversy among the pros when they were released given the ridiculous amounts of spin that Zane, Connor, and others were getting with these paddles. Apparently, Pro XR found a way to use a more aggressive texture without going over the legal limits by making the texture greater in one direction than it is at 90 degrees to that direction. And the axis with more grit is the same as the one that brushes up on the ball for topspin or down for slice. So the machine that measures grit, the Starrett, measures the texture at different angles, so these paddles still pass the test. A clever way to push the legal limits for sure, and my spin tests put both paddles in the upper range of the top tier category. Both of these paddles are also thermoformed and provide a good amount of power and pop. If you're more of a control player, the standard shape of the Zane paddle is more forgiving with a larger sweet spot and makes a good control paddle. They also have a standard shape in a non-signature paddle, which might be appealing for those who think the Zane paddle graphics are too busy. The number two spot for the best spin paddles goes to the Diadem Edge 18K. The Edge uses an 18K carbon fiber weave, which gives it a unique three-dimensional look. The theory behind the carbon weave is that it provides multiple orientations of the carbon fiber toes to allow greater spin from any direction. I'm not sure if it's the orientation of the carbon fiber, the peel ply texture placed on top, or a combination of both, but this pedal does get wicked spin. My spin tests average a whopping 2300 RPM, placing this paddle in the 97th percentile. And there are two varieties of the Edge 18K, the Standard, which is a good control-oriented paddle, and the Power Pro, which is thermoformed and provides more power and pop. The Volair Forza 14mm paddle takes the number one spot in my rankings for spin paddles. This is a thermoformed hybrid shaped paddle that delivers plenty of pop and sits at the very top of my spin test rankings, coming in at 2330 RPM. At that rate of spin, it's actually hard to zero in on the spin rate using my fastest camera at 240 frames per second. So I was a little conservative counting the frames per revolution and the real RPM is probably slightly higher. The Forza is also just a good all-around paddle, and it plays similar to other thermoformed hybrid paddles, such as the Vatic Pro Flash and Rhombus R1 Nova. The 14mm Forza got better spin on my tests than the 16mm, and I've noticed this trend for other paddles too. When a paddle comes in both 14mm and 16mm options, the thinner one usually gets better spin. So the 14mm Volier Forza is a great choice for people who want the absolute best spin on the market in a pedal that also delivers a lot of pop and hand speed for quick exchanges at the kitchen. The lightweight paddle category is for people who want to maximize hand speed and maneuverability or who have joint issues such as tendonitis and can't play with some of the heavier paddles. Ultra lightweight paddles generally get good pop, but the trade-off is less power and a smaller sweet spot. For my top picks, I'm looking for the best combination of all these key metrics. Third on my list of top lightweight paddles is the Groovin Movin 13S. Don't let the cute look of this paddle fool you, it packs a mean punch. Literally, the punch volley speed of this paddle is top tier. It's tied for fourth place for pop on all of the paddles I've ever tested, just under the new Gearbox Pro Power paddles. 
This great pop probably comes from a combination of the unibody thermoformed design and low swing weight, which allows the paddle to be accelerated quickly. Swing weight measures only 101, falling at the sixth percentile, so hand speed is there all day. Although it's extremely light, the twist weight is actually above average, falling at the 66th percentile, which is reflected in a wide sweet spot that feels very forgiving for such a thin paddle. This paddle is a great choice for people who prioritize hand speed and maneuverability, good pop for speed ups and counters, and a large sweet spot. Taking the number two spot is the new 60 Double Black Diamond Infinity. This is an edgeless design with the same shape as the original Double Black Diamond, but with reduced swing weight and other properties that are unique to its edgeless design. This uses a 16 millimeter core, so it'll feel softer and more forgiving than other lightweight pedals that use thinner cores. The swing weight is 110, falling at the 22nd percentile. So this is a lighter swing weight than most other hybrid shaped pedals, and you'll get a noticeable bump in hand speed with this compared to the original Double Black Diamond. I definitely found myself reacting quicker and getting the paddle into position faster with the Infinity when comparing it side by side with the original Double Black Diamond. Its stock twist weight is below average, falling at the 35th percentile, and I did notice the paddle twisting in my hand a bit for off-center shots. Putting a quarter ounce of lead tape at the four and eight o'clock positions really broadened the sweet spot and made the pedal feel more stable, while only increasing the swing weight by two points. Spin is top tier, averaging just over 2,000 RPM, and power and pop ratings for the Infinity are slightly above average at the 56th and 59th percentiles. So the Infinity is a great choice for people who are looking for better hand speed, but don't want to go all the way down the rabbit hole into the ultra lightweight pedal realm. The Infinity finds a good place in the edgeless lightweight pedal space by providing a good balance of everything, while not going too far in any direction, which always comes with trade-offs. It strikes a good balance between power and control, skewing slightly more into the control realm, has a decent sweet spot, and provides increased hand speed and maneuverability over paddles with similar shapes. Plus, this paddle really looks fantastic, and it always turned heads when I brought it to the courts. One note for this paddle and all edgeless paddles, you definitely want to use edge tape to avoid chipping up the edge when it comes into contact with the court or other paddles. I recommend Pickleball Effects Edge Tape, which looks clean and sharp, comes in different sizes to match different paddle thicknesses, and doesn't have any texture branding on it. So go check out Braden's Pickleball Effect YouTube and Amazon pages to find out more. The number one spot on my lightweight paddle list goes to the Electrum Stealth series. These are edgeless, ultralight versions of Electrum's three paddle shapes, so the Pro, Pro 2, and Model E. And these three shapes provide all the options anyone could want in a lightweight paddle from ridiculously low swing weight in the Pro and Pro 2 to a more balanced, control-oriented lightweight paddle for the Model E Stealth. And they all come with Electrum's now famous Torre raw carbon fiber, which gets great spin and durability. Let's start with the Pro Stealth. This is a standard square-shaped paddle, and out of the box, it comes with a crazy low swing weight of only 92, which falls at the zero percentile. Zeroth percentile, is that a thing? So yes, it has one of the lowest swing weights of any paddle I've tested. The Pro 2 Stealth has almost the same swing weight coming in at the first percentile, and the Model E Stealth swing weight is a little larger at the 15th percentile. With these low swing weights also come low twist weights, which range from zero to the 15th percentile. This means that out of the box, these paddles will have smaller sweet spots and may feel unstable in your hands with off-center shots. The Pro Stealth and the Model E actually feel pretty good in their stock form, and they both play well above their twist weight. But in my opinion, the Pro 2 Stealth definitely needs lead tape. I actually recommend lead tape for all three of these paddles, but you can get away without it on the Model E and Pro Stealth. I added half an ounce of lead tape to each paddle, so a quarter ounce to each side, and here's where I placed it. On the Pro Stealth and Model E, I added it at the five o'clock and seven o'clock positions, and for the Pro 2 Stealth, I added it a little higher, so around the four and eight o'clock positions. 
After adding lead tape, the swing weight was minimally increased, ranging from just one to six percentile points. On the other hand, the lead tape significantly increased the twist weight, ranging from 44 all the way up to 71 percentile points. This is exactly what we want to give us a bigger sweet spot and more stability. I'd say the lead tape is a big improvement to both the Model E and Pro Stealth, and it completely transforms the Pro 2 Stealth. The lead tape also gives each paddle a slight bump in power, while pop is slightly decreased. So again, lead tape, highly recommended for the Stealth series. Even after lead tape, you still get the best hand speed of any paddle I've tested for the Pro and Pro 2, and it gives the paddles a larger sweet spot and more power. I'll put a link in the description for which type of lead tape I'm using and where you can buy it at Amazon. The Pro and Pro 2 Stealth are great for people who want the lowest swing weight and best hand speed of anything out there on the market, and for people who don't mind modifying their paddles and experimenting with lead tape. And the Model E Stealth is a great lightweight paddle for people who want more control and a more plush feeling paddle with great hand speed. So the Electrum Stealth series really does cover all the bases in the ultra lightweight paddle arena. This category is for people looking for the best price to performance ratio in a paddle. So if you don't like paying a lot of money for a good paddle for yourself, or if you're looking for a gift for someone that won't break the bank, these are all great choices. These paddles basically do a lot of the same things that other paddles do at half the cost or less. Number three in the budget category goes to the Hudef Viva Pro Gen 2 paddle. Although the first generation of the Viva Pro suffered from issues related to core corruption, Hudef has reconfigured its Gen 2 model to fix these issues. As I understand it, they've added some sort of core reinforcement technology, and they subjected the new paddle to impact testing at the factory prior to its release. The paddle is fully thermoformed and does have a quality feel. And if you're in the market for a power paddle, this is a great budget option. You can get this paddle for just $110.50 using the code JOHNQ. The Viva Pro Gen 2 has a rectangular elongated shape and a raw carbon fiber face that provides top tier spin. But the swing weight is very high coming in at the 97th percentile. So if you're looking for quick hand speed and maneuverability, this is not the choice for you. Or if you suffer from tennis elbow, I wouldn't recommend this paddle. On the other hand, the high swing weight provides very good power, and this paddle falls at the 85th percentile in my power ratings. It also has a large sweet spot, which is reflected in the large twist weight. Pop is not this paddle's strongest suit, as expected for a heavier paddle, but it's still above average. The Viva Pro Gen 2 is a great choice for a budget-conscious player in the market for an elongated power paddle and who doesn't mind its heavier swing weight. I found that hard serves, drives, and putaways are this paddle's strengths, and it has a solid feel with plenty of plow through. The large sweet spot and top tier spin also help with control, so drops, resets, and grinding out points of the kitchen all felt very good. My number two spot for budget paddles goes to the fire and ice paddles from Speed Up. These are thermoform paddles with a raw carbon fiber face, and the standout feature for me was the extra long handles created from a solid polyurethane mold. These handles are advertised as six inches long, but you can easily over wrap it up to six and three quarters of an inch, which is great for people coming over from tennis and for two handed backhands. And the octagonal polyurethane handles have a very premium feel. In fact, in my opinion, they're about the best feeling handles out there right now. These paddles perform very well too. The Fire model has a thinner 14 millimeter core, so it has a smaller swing weight that translates into good hand speed and maneuverability. And the Ice model has a standard 16 millimeter core, so its swing weight is a bit larger, which is typical for elongated paddles. The trade-off for quick hand speed with the Fire is a smaller sweet spot, as reflected in its twist weight, which falls at the 37th percentile. The Ice's sweet spot feels more forgiving, and its swing weight falls at the 45th percentile. And again, adding some lead tape to the 4 and 8 o'clock positions on these paddles increases the sweet spot and power without increasing the swing weight too much. I definitely recommend lead tape for the Fire in particular. 
spin is very good for both models, falling within that boundary between high spin and top tier. The ice model is more powerful than the fire, but the fire has significantly better pop. So the Speed Up, Fire, and Ice paddles are a great choice for people looking for a budget thermoform paddle with a premium feel and an extra long handle for two-handed backhands. If your game is power focused, go for the ice. And if you're into fast kitchen exchanges, hand speed, and attacking with punch volleys and flicks, the Fire could be a better choice. And my number one spot for budget paddles goes to the Vatic Prism Flash 16 millimeter paddle. If you watched my first video in this series, you know that I also gave the Prism Flash third place in the control paddle category. The other two paddles in that category cost more than twice as much as this thing, which is only $90 with my code. There's nothing really not to like about this paddle if you're a control oriented player. It gets top to your spin, has an extra large sweet spot, good hand speed, and a plush feeling face. Its low swing weight helps with hand speed, and its above average twist weight helps expand the sweet spot. Power and pop ratings are low for the Prism Flash, falling at the 25th and 17th percentiles, but this is part of what makes it such a good control paddle because you can expect fewer pop-ups when the ball doesn't rocket off the face. It's hard to believe that you can get one of the best control paddles on the market for under a hundred bucks. The Prism Flash really is a steal, and it's a fantastic choice for anyone looking to improve their drops, dinks, resets, and anything else requiring finesse. As I mentioned in the first video, my primary paddle for the past several months has been the Pickleball Apes Pro Line Energy, but I wanted to give you a sneak peek at what has probably taken over this number one spot as my personal favorite, the 6-0 Ruby. The Ruby is scheduled for release on December 6th, 2023, so if you're watching this video before then, you'll have to wait a few days if you want to pick one up. The Ruby also uses a Kevlar face, but instead of a hybrid weave of Kevlar and carbon fiber like the Apes, the Ruby uses a 100% DuPont Kevlar face. I won't spoil the release with too many details now, and I'll hit all these details in my upcoming review but the Ruby plays like a more powerful double black diamond with a slightly larger sweet spot and a slightly softer feel. It doesn't have as plush of a feel as the original Apes Proline Energy, but is more in line with the Proline Energy S in terms of the feel of the face, although the Ruby has a more forgiving sweet spot. Also, the spin is top tier. I got several comments from my opponents about how much the ball dipped with top spin using the Ruby. And the power is there too, at dozens of percentile points above the original double black diamond. On the other hand, the pop is more muted at about the median in my database. So I'd put the Ruby in the power side of the spectrum, but with very manageable control. In fact, one of the best things about this paddle is its good control, which comes from a combination of its muted pop, great spin, extra large sweet spot, and a less stiff feeling off the face. Oh, John, he's just sitting on it. Also, this is just a beautiful paddle. It has to be one of the best looking paddles of the year. So by the end of the year, the Ruby may have taken the number one spot on my list of best all court paddles. But given how deep my experience runs with the apes, I just haven't had enough time yet with the Ruby to say for sure. All right, that's it for this video and thank you for sticking around to the very end. I do hope these videos help you sort through the tidal wave of paddles that were released this year. Like I said at the top of the video, paddle technology has come so far, which has really mirrored the growth of our sport. It's been a crazy year and there are no signs that things are slowing down anytime soon. So now I'm looking forward to seeing what's in store